so it's three thirty now. Uh, Sarup sir, can we start now? Absolutely. Right. So welcome to all the participants to the second expert lecture of the geotechnical webinar series, Advanced Testing Technologies for Geotechnical Investigation, hosted combining by Civil Engineering Department, JYT Wagnagat, in association with IGS Shimla chapter. So myself, Neera Singh Parihar, Assistant Professor in Civil Engineering Department, and I'll be the coordinator and host for the entire webinar series, along with my, with my colleague, Mr. Rohan Singhal. So now on the behalf of entire JYT community, Civil Engineering Department JYT and IGS Shimla chapter, we would like to welcome our geotechnical guest speaker for the day, Mr. Saurav Gupta sir, who is director at Singers Geotechnica Private Limited. Welcome to you sir, and it's a privilege for all of us to have a dynamic person as you here on this platform of IGS Shimla chapter. Now giving a brief introduction about him, Mr. Saurav Gupta holds an undergraduate degree from Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi, and MS degree from Stanford University, California. He started his career with uh, Fugro West in California, US, where he spent a few years working on seismic hazard assessment of some of the major international projects. He later returned to India in 2007 to join Stingers Geotechnica as a second generation entrepreneur with a dream of changing the way business is done in his home country, India. And 14 years since then, he has made numerous efforts to lead the geotechnical industry in the right direction. And he is quite optimistic for a positive change in the industry itself. Mr. Saurav is currently a director at Singers Geotechnica Private Limited, which is now India's leading geotechnical investigation and consultancy company as of now. Mr. Saurav is also an active member in several professional forums such as TFI, IGS, ISS, MGE, and BIS, etc. In addition to his other roles, he has also published over 24 quality research papers based on his field experiences, which truly reflects his valuable contribution in the field of academia and research. With this note, I would like to invite Mr. Saurav Gupta, sir, to kindly take the main stage and request him to proceed with the second lecture of the Geotechnical Webinar Series. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Neeraj. Uh, uh, and very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, this is uh, the second uh, lecture in the series uh, of Advanced te Testing Technologies in Geotechnical Investigations. I would like to begin, of course, by thanking uh, IGS Shimla chapter as well as JP Institute for giving all of us the opportunity to interact from the comfort of our own homes. Uh, I think uh, there are a few positive impacts that COVID has had and webinars like this is definitely one of them. So we should capitalize on this. Definitely. I'll jump right in. Uh, the first uh, lecture, uh, Mr. Ravi Sundaram has already covered. Uh, he gave a very comprehensive overview of the various advanced testing technologies available to us. Uh, this uh, Today, we will basically focus on what I feel is one of the more versatile or one of the more powerful in-situ testing methods which is the CPT or the cone penetration test. Now, this is a slide I like because I feel that as geotechnical engineers, this is what we are almost expected to do. We are expected to see what cannot be seen. We are expected to look below the ground and figure out how the ground will behave. And we all know practicing engineers, researchers, we all know what a tough task this is. Uh, so, but we have no options, uh, you know, this is the job that we have taken up. This is our responsibility. So what we do is, you know, we, we all take our toolkit of investigations and techniques, and we just go out there on the project site and uh, cross our fingers and kind of try to do a good, honest job of doing this. Uh, they say that uh, any carpenter is as good as his tools uh, similarly, as geotechnical engineers, uh, today we have several tools in our toolkit. Uh, the more prominent among these, of course, you know, we all know about the standard penetration test. Uh, but there are so many more tools available. 
today. You, you have the uh, marketing dilatometer, you have the pressure meter, you have uh, the vein shear test for soft clays, uh, you have cross hole, down hole, uh, surface wave method, suspension logging, and of course, then you have the cone penetration test, which will be the focus of our discussion today. Now, I want to talk about this uh, in the last 15 odd years as a practicing engineer. One of my pet peeves, uh, I would say, has been scope definition. And we always talk about this in various forums. Uh, the what the, the norm in the industry today is that the scope of investigations is often defined by the owners or the structural engineers or the architects or the PMC or and more often than not, it's it's a simple copy paste job, uh, you know, standard conventional borehole kind of investigation, irrespective of what we are trying to find out. And uh, at Sengers, you know, this is something which which we do not subscribe to. Uh, and internationally, the the understanding is that the geotechnical investigation program must be tailor made for your project. It is very important. I cannot overemphasize this. Um, of course, as Ravi sir had said in his earlier presentation, there are levels of investigation, which can depend on several criteria, such as uh, the location of the project, how well we understand the ground conditions, our design objectives, the level of geotechnical risk, uh, and of course, you know, potential for time and cost saving. Uh, so this. Uh, it is not a one size fit all kind of a scene. You know, you have to uh, look at every project as a new, fresh opportunity, and you must uh, design your uh, investigation program as per the project requirements. The recommended, of course, uh, approach, and we'll talk about this more, uh, is you know, internationally also is that it's best to carry out a lot of in situ tests. In, in the first phase to truly understand your site before you go for, uh, you know, more detailed testing and sampling and so on and so forth. So more along this, you know, it's you, as we said, you know, your site characterization program should be risk based. So it's the, uh, if you have a low risk project, uh, like a G plus two building in, uh, in say, Gurgaon in a very well known uniform strata, uh, then, you know, your investigation program can be fairly basic. It, it could consist of a few in-situ tests like CPT uh, combined with maybe a couple of boreholes, uh, index testing, and finally, you know, the empirical correlation-based uh, recommendations. And that works fairly well because, you know, if, if you have a low-risk structure uh, in, in a known stratigraphy, then this kind of a program works. But then, you know, most of our projects these days, you know, do not fit into this category. As we are moving forward, as we are advancing, you know, your structures are getting heavier, your soils are getting worse because all the good sites are taken. So we are moving more towards moderate and high risk uh, category projects. When I say high risk, uh, then, you know, uh, say, you know, you're building a power plant structure, a chimney in, in a somewhat complex uh, geological setting the recommended procedure is you know what we are normally doing so first what we typically see in the industry is most people what they do is they go for a cookie cutter one shot investigation program they'll subscribe boreholes and plate load tests all over the place uh, as per you know the technical specs and we simply dive in and we start doing boreholes and you know two months three months later we get a report and that's when we start applying a mind to the project uh, I feel this is very regressive. Uh, you know, we have done a lot of projects where we have reversed the trend, and we start by, you know, first uh, carrying out a preliminary site evaluation. Uh, basically, you get all the stakeholders of the project in a room together, uh, and you know, this should always be the first step of any project. Get the stakeholders together, get the structural engineer, the architect, the geotech guy, the owner, the contractor, get them in together to really understand, you know, what is it that we are trying to do here? Uh, what is the risk? Uh, what are the uh, known conditions? You know, sometimes you'll have some background information, some prior experience. 
capitalize on that uh, and then first start with step one maybe carry out something similar to a lo low risk investigation just a preliminary ground investigation couple of cpts boreholes just to kind of see where you stand across the side these can be widely spaced now based on what you get and your understanding of you know the approximate ground conditions we should get into a second phase so for example you could carry out on, on most soil sites what i would recommend is carrying out a bunch of cpt soundings at say a 50 to 100 meter grid spacing to truly understand what is the ground condition where are the critical zones what are the challenges uh, for design and only when we do this because see this can be done fairly quickly and in a fairly inexpensive fashion only when we do this then based on the uh, data that we have that is when we should go into the detailed ground investigation now, detailed ground investigation you can do additional in situ tests uh, depending on what you require if there's a retaining wall the pressure meters if there is a machine foundation maybe do a seismic test over there and uh, collect high quality undisturbed samples maybe do fewer boreholes but do a good job you know collect high quality undisturbed samples if you're doing spt make sure you get the energy correction uh, uh, analysis done uh, do high quality lab testing and this is when you know almost for the same cost and and typically for in a much faster duration you can get a much better output for your uh, for all your efforts so we have done this this is tried and tested and this is the recommended procedure across the world this is how we should do our ground investigations i will not get into this too much but obviously uh, when you design your ground investigation uh, you have to be very uh, aware of what is it that we are looking for. Uh, each, every tool or every test has got its own pros and cons. It's got its own strengths and weaknesses. And this is where the inputs of the geotechnical engineer are very important to design or tailor make your investigation program as per our requirement. Uh, then this is more along the same line. It's, it's very Sorry, it's a busy slide. There's no point getting into it. But again, if, if you truly are planning ahead and you know which are my critical design parameters or critical geotechnical parameters, then you know you can actually pick and choose your tools accordingly. If you are interested in deformation modulus or K0 values, maybe you should be doing pressure meters. If you are invest, uh, interested in uh, liquefaction assessment or uh, checking the efficacy of ground improvements uh, or quick characterization cpts might be the way to go if you have soft clays go for field wind shear right uh, this is contrary to uh, the practice on most projects today where you know this level of understanding is simply does not exist and most people just barge in with boreholes um, all over the place randomly scattered and then you know we kind of find ourselves in a very uh, tricky situation down the line Now, see, uh, getting into the main topic, which is CPT, I've cut the, our time into five sections. We will first talk about, you know, what, uh, what is the equipment like? What is the CPT equipment? Uh, we'll talk about some of the advantages of CPT, uh, interpretation techniques, applications. And in the end, if we still have time, uh, we can talk about you know, some of the more recent innovations in CBT uh, technology. Uh, interestingly, uh, CBT is not new by any standards. It's been around for, uh, what, 70 plus 20, 90 years. Uh, so this is not new, uh, although it might be new to some of us, but it's been around since 1930s. And if you see, uh, you know, from 1930s till date, you know, there have been many technological advances. We've gone from a simple Dutch mechanical cone to state of art, uh, you know, electric piece of cones. And we'll talk more about this today. Uh, and it's been really, it's been a fantastic journey uh, with the efforts of, you know, hundreds of researchers and practicing engineers. Uh, and that is, we today we can, you know, happily enjoy the fruits of their labor, I would say. Uh, we have several probe sizes. Uh, we have many options now. Uh, although the most common probes are, are the 10 uh, square centimeter and 15 square centimeter probes, you also have tiny probes like the two square centimeter probe, 
which is good in offshore and marine environments. You, some people have also tried using a 40 square centimeter probe, which is very good for hard uh, gravelly kind of soils. Uh, but again, I think the, uh, the most common probe sizes are the 10 and 15. I think the Indian code only mentions the 10, but ASTM uh, definitely talks about the 10 and 15 size cones both. One of the uh, complaints that uh, people earlier used to have with the CPT used to be that you know you can't collect samples and you can't see the soil and get a feel of the soil. So sometime back, uh, uh, a couple of Dutch guys got together and they solved this problem by actually coming up with a direct push soil sampler. Uh, and this is pretty cool. Uh, you know you can actually do this while doing a CPT sounding. You can stop the sounding. You can uh, push the sampler down and you can actually collect a fairly intact sample uh, from uh, the CPT hole itself. And you can use that for lab testing. Uh, so this is, again, it's a very simple technique. And the advantage is that, you know, if, if you are doing a sounding and you feel that there is a critical zone or, or a part, you know, some, somewhere at some depth, if you feel that you want to really check the, the soil characterization, you can always stop pick up a sample and you can move forward. Yeah. We'll talk about penetrometers, uh, you know, or the cones themselves. There are several penetrometers. The oldest, um, you know, type is the mechanical cone, which is the, what we call the static CPT with mechanical cone, or sometimes we call it SCPT uh, in the Indian context. And I think mechanical cones have been pretty much, you know, the most, commonly used cones uh, in India so far, although internationally people have moved away from mechanical cones uh, onto more advanced cones. The mechanical cone is very simple. It's a simple mechanical device. You have a cone uh, with a friction jacket uh, and uh, here. And the way it works is, you know, you can take your cone, uh, you push the cone down to get the cone tip resistance. Then you push the friction jacket to get the friction resistance, and then you push the entire system down to get the total resistance. It's very simple, and usually this is connected, uh, you know, through the hydraulics. It's connected to pressure gauges, so you can actually pick up the uh, soil resistance or the cone tip and friction resistance from the pressure gauges which are attached to the pushing equipment. Uh, and this is kind of what you get. It's not bad. I mean, you get a fairly continuous profile of the cone tip resistance, the friction ratio with depth. Uh, typically, you know, you can pick up a reading every 20 uh, centimeters. So this is very good continuous data. Uh, what we have found is the mechanical cone is uh, definitely fairly good in measuring cone tip resistance. But if you are dealing with soft clays or if you are more interested in the in the friction characteristics, then maybe piezometers are, or piezo cones are, sorry, the, the way to go. So after the mechanical cone, uh, if you saw the earlier slide, you know I think in the 1970s, people started moving to electric cones uh, with or without pore pressure measurement. The electric cone is essentially the same thing. It's a better design. Uh, and what you have is, so rather than measuring the soil resistance through uh, pressure gauges uh, attached to the top, in the electric cone, you have uh, strain transducers and sensors essentially which are housed inside the cone itself. So you may have you know, a sensor at the bottom, which picks up your cone tip resistance. You can have sensors on the sides to pick up your slip friction. Uh, and all of this now is digital. So there is, this is great because then it really takes the, the risk or the, mm, the uncertainty uh, out of the entire process. There is absolutely no human intervention anymore. Your entire data collection is now digital and hence it's automated. So the, the system is great because you, what you get from this is, you know, you get uh, operator independence. That is to say that your test results no longer depend on the skill of the operator in taking the, the readings. Uh, and electric cones, I think now are pretty much the standard uh, on, in most investigation projects. Uh, now, you can add to the same electric cone if you add uh, another sensor to measure the pore pressure or the pore water pressure, the U2 sensor. 
then the same cone is known as a piezo cone or what we uh, you know nomenclature is cptu and we'll keep talking about this um, and we'll see why this is also good now see we are measuring already three channels we have got the cone to resistance friction and now the u2 and as if that's not good enough the dutch then came up with uh, with another sensor uh, which is the the seismic sensor and this uh, this is pretty much the most advanced cone for uh, static characterization and this is known as the seismic cpt or the scptu uh, why is this important i think it, what we will all appreciate that uh, low strain uh, uh, characterization Uh, such as you know your shear wave velocity compression wave velocity as well as your low strain modulus values are becoming more and more important uh, not only for seismic hazard analysis but also for uh, ground response analysis and site classification there are lots of very strong correlations now with vs and this has become uh, one of the more important geotechnical parameters for use in all kinds of design and hazard assessment so getting to know the shear wave velocity profile becomes very important the advantage of the seismic cpt and that's the setup is that you can kind of you know you can get the seismic velocity while doing the cpt sounding uh, so what the way it works is you know you've got the you've got the cone you're pushing the cone down and the only thing which you do different is you know you can stop at certain depths wherever you want to pick up the v sub s there's a plank uh, at the ground level which you can impact to generate the seismic waves and uh, obviously you know distance over time is uh, velocity you know pretty much the distance from the ground level to where the cone is that's the depth you can measure the time of arrival and you just do d by t and you get a fairly good handle of the average uh, compression and shear wave velocities in the zone of interest uh, and this is uh, now yeah this is what the you know output looks like this is what your seismic cptu or the scptu this is a typical output and, and isn't this incredible you get essentially you get your tip resistance cleave friction pore pressures and your shear wave velocity all in one test and incredibly enough you know you can get this kind of rich data in about half an hour time per point uh, it's it's quite incredible now obviously we have the cone uh, but you need something to push the cone down so what we uh, have for this obviously you need the pushing equipment uh, there's a hydraulic typically you have a hydraulic pushing unit a bunch of pushing rods also known as sounding rods which is normally about a meter long and then you have your penetrometer or the cone itself uh, and this is how you push it down i'll show you a few photos uh, this is a very simple uh, trailer mounted pushers of 10 and 20 ton capacity oh. and these uh, get the resistance through anchors so you see the anchors over here you can anchor the rig down to get the ground to get the reaction force and you simply push the cone down and this is not new again at sengers we've been using this since the 1990s and we've probably done thousands of tests uh, you know using these rigs and the results have been frankly quite uh, quite amazing of course in uh, in europe in north america uh, the you know since they do a lot more cpts now than where we are today Uh, they have moved to truck mounted pushers like this one this can be i think this one is a is a 30 ton capacity uh, pusher or pushing unit so it can push up to 30 tons you can also have crawler mounted pushers like this one uh, obviously the advantage being of the truck and the crawler mounted the advantage is that there is no anchoring system these are self weighted these are weighted pushers there is no anchoring system so you save the time uh you know a lot of time so you don't have to spend any time in uh pani pio pani pio setting the augers down you can just okay <laughs> you can just move to your test location and you can do the test and it's uh, super fast and obviously if you have uh, undulating terrain then a crawler mounted can be highly efficient 
if you have limited access people have come up with these kind of portable ram sets these are very small uh, units which can be used to do a quick test uh, in areas you know where you have your uh, way less head space uh, maybe a tunnel or uh, you know in a basement or something you can use these kind of cpt uh, pushers on the other end of the spectrum you know people have and and this is where the beauty of cpt really lies in offshore geotechnics uh, people have been using cpts you know as a, as a tool of preference i think they hardly do any borrows now uh, offshore investigations are uh, you know rely on uh, cpts using jackup boats or you also have sea floor cpt system i think this one here can go down several thousand meters below the water surface anchor onto the sea floor and do a cpt uh, it's quite incredible uh, and it's fast uh, so you you know it's the preferred way for Uh, doing offshore investigations so that's about the equipment uh, let's talk a little bit about why you know why are we talking about cpt why is it uh, good for us uh, and let's see if i can help you uh, get convinced on this you see this slide and this is a slide after main uh, uh, dr main prepared this slide i've taken it from him Uh, if you look at our conventional drilling and sampling program you know typically if if i want all the various parameters of geotechnical parameters look at what all we have to do you know we have to do uh, we have to do bore holes to pick up your n60 to collect samples for lab testing if we want uh, if you come into soft clays at the bottom you know you have to stop the bore hole and you have to arrange uh, maybe a field venture to push down in the soft clays because spds won't work or are quite useless uh, if you are if you're interested in knowing the deformation modulus then again you have to stop the bore hole and you have to lower a pressure meter equipment down the bore hole and you have to do a pressure meter test if i want to know hydraulic uh, uh, you know permeability or you know uh, characteristics i have to stop again i have to do a packer test or or an in situ permeability test and lastly if i want to know about the seismic uh velocities then you know we have to make maybe additional bore holes or and then we do a cross hole or a down hole or sasw test so you look at how what all we have to do typically in a conventional setup just to get the parameters that we want and we look towards the right isn't it amazing you can have a single test a single push and you can get all of these parameters in a single go in one go and the beauty is there is no more debate about you know if the if the variation is because of spatial differences because you get all these parameters at the same location in one shot i tried to prepare a list and i was thinking about what are the advantages of the cpt uh, it's fast that's the first advantage uh, most of our projects now we don't have time we don't have the luxury of weeks and months to uh, complete our investigation uh, because most of the projects are fast track everyone wants an answer yesterday uh, cpts full fill that gap because they're very fast it's granular and accurate you get unlike uh, the other in situ tests like spt or pressure meter dilatometer in a cpt you get continuous or near continuous data with with a uh, resolution of as little as 20 cm it's very accurate it's reliable it's repeatable and you can also these days with modern pushing equipment you can go down fairly deep in most soils people have gone up to 100 200 meters with cpt pushers uh, then again as you know we saw earlier you know it is also highly modular so you can combine cpt with different kinds of sensors to pick up you know different kinds of properties uh, to the extent people now also fitted cameras in the cpt so you can also get uh, a view of you know the soil as it shears while you push the cpt down so it's it's quite amazing then it's safe it's clean and you know the best part is while i'm talking about this i think if you look at all the advantages the the instantly the the thought that goes in probably everyone's mind it must be really expensive but it's not you know it's it's the cost of doing uh, in situ testing 
works out as pretty much the same, more or less, as the cost of doing a conventional GTI. It's not very different. And if you look at all the advantages, you look at the time saving, the, it's, uh, it works out cheaper, actually, in the end. If you look at uh, what you get, uh, the bang for your buck that you get from in-situ testing, it actually works out cheaper in almost all cases. Now, let, I, I said it's faster, but let's see how fast. Now, I, I made this in the morning, and I was thinking uh, ballpark, and again, this is going to vary largely. If I have a site and I want to do a single borehole of, say, 30 meters, uh, and you know the steps involved. You have to get the rig there. You set it up. Uh, you drill. You you know take your SPTs. You collect your samples. Transport the sample to the lab. You do the lab testing. You compile the report. Then you do your analysis. All in all, the minimum uh, life cycle of a borehole, even a single borehole, is anything between 15 to 30 days. And compare that with the timeline for doing a CPT sounding, 30 meters, same site, same location. You can be done in about four to five hours. And this is an overestimate. Usually the test would take about 30 minutes. Uh, for a 30 meter sounding, you take only about half hour and you get your results instantly. There's no lab testing required. There's, you know, you have software, so all the data is digital you get all your output almost instantly. And you know if you scale that to a project site, say a solar project site, you know, which we're doing about 100 boroughs is very commonplace. If I do a conventional investigation, I'm considering one rig, then 100 boroughs would take me four to six months plus lab testing time. And the same thing, 100 uh, soundings or 100 test locations with a CPT-based investigation program we can be done in about 10 days time. And I think, especially for renewable sectors, I think this is the future. This is where we will all end up, uh, as it is the case in the West already. CPT is highly accurate. Uh, in, in conventional geotechnics, you know, you have a lot of limitations uh, in terms of accuracy. You know, you're kind of guessing. There's a lot of guesswork involved between the SPTs and even with the SPTs. But in a CPT investigation, especially if you are, uh, uh, well, in, in all CPT investigations, you look at the accuracy of uh, the data, it's, it's incredible. See, because there is no, uh, again, it's completely automated. Uh, in an SPT, you know, your values would depend on so many things. It would depend on the drilling technique, uh, the operator scale, the, uh, you know, the hammer setup, and we've all talked about, and we will talk more about how, you know, the SPT is completely non-standard. Uh, how many corrections are required on the SPT? In a CPT, you get, you get what you get. You know, you do the test and you simply, you will instantly, you will get your results and they will be bang on uh, in all cases. The beauty again is because it's continuous profiling and sounding, you can actually pick up uh, you know, very tiny weak zones. You can pick up even a, a, a 0 0.64 mm thick weak layer or a shear zone. You can pick these up with the CPT, which would be next to impossible in a borehole investigation. I talked earlier about depth uh, and, you know, again, with the right uh, tools in place, it is now possible to go up to 100 meters or N value of 100 with most pushing equipment. And in, in India, you know, and sitting where we are, I think on most sites, uh, this is good enough for, for almost all investigations. When I talked about repeatability, you know, this is important, you know, you, we all talk to structural engineers and they're always complaining about how SPT values, there's too much scatter in the value and, uh, you know, <laughs> the values are different from one rig to the other, from one contractor to the other, uh, Sometimes the SPT values are different in the morning and different in the afternoon, depending on how tired that labor is. But in CPT, uh, this is not an ideal plot. Mind you, this is, I have not picked the best data. This is typical. If, if you do uh, CPTs at the same location, this is the degree of repeatability or reliability that you get. Uh, and this is useful, right? Because when we do SPT-based analysis and you see a lot of scatter in the data, 
then as a designer you always tend to you know go on the conservative side if you know that your uh, that your test data is repeatable and reliable then uh, you would be more confident in using it for uh, cutting edge design of course there are limitations uh, the cpt is uh, as compared to conventional drilling rigs does require higher capital investment it requires uh, skilled operators it's expensive equipment uh, except unless you're using a cpt sampler usually cpt soundings don't come with sampling and of course you can't do cpts in gravel or cemented layers and rock and boulders uh, lastly and this is important the it, it, sometimes it's more about uh, our own hesitation to move to something new so in india today i feel we are about 20 years behind in in north america and europe uh, you know they've already gone through this transition uh, from conventional geotechnics to advanced geotechnics and they now if you look at most projects uh, in the developed countries uh, you'll be amazed the, the at times you know they'll just do cpts without even a single bolt and and the investigation timelines are cut down drastically because of this so that's uh, the cpt advantage let's talk very briefly about the interpretation uh here this uh, i like this slide because many years back uh, one of my colleagues told me i was working on some finite element analysis you know uh, early on in my career and he said all this is gigo i said what is gigo garbage in garbage out now this is interesting and especially this is it's it's ironic because if you look at a lot of i come across a lot of students uh, coming fresh out of college today and you know almost everyone is uh, working on these very fancy plaxis and flak and you know all kinds of models uh, and now i think you know i'm 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 relatively a dinosaur in this case i i look at them and i'm like hey you know this makes no sense it does not matter uh, you know what software or what tools you're using for analysis if your data is not uh good you know the first step in geotechnical and the most important step is to get the right input data to get the right site characterization because otherwise you know if this is what's happening right you have your uh, design engineer sitting and using slope w and softwares and all that and you have the site guys who just you know doing a bad job then you will get gigo and that's very dangerous for design uh cpt interpretation is good because uh, as we saw earlier in a single shot you can pretty much correlate your cpt results to almost everything that we look for as geotechnical engineers you look at state parameters strength stiffness soil profiling compressibility consolidation and we'll see how all of these uh, can be very easily picked up from cpt data uh the first of course is site characterization or soil classification uh so there have been many efforts in this and years and years of research and these are one of the more uh, recent uh, classification plots uh, which is normalized so you look at the normalized cone to resistance normalized by the effect of uh, vertical stress versus the normalized friction ratio and you know software will simply plot your uh, cpt results onto this graph and it will give you a very good idea of your sbt or your soil behavior type uh what is soil behavior type is nothing but you know kind of like a classification like silt clay sand etc uh we they call it soil behavior type and it's not strictly the same as soil classification because the two things are not exactly the same but if you look at real time data and this is you know one of uh one of the data from a site if you compare borehole classification and soil behavior type more often than 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 not you know you will get excellent correlation uh, between the in the soil classification of course many of us uh, at least for the first couple of years we would still be a little scared or uh, wary of using uh, cpt directly for design uh, we have become very comfortable with our spt n60 values good news is that uh, it's very easy to correlate your cone tip resistance with the spt value so if you want a little bit of reassurance uh, 
uh, in terms of SPT, all it takes is you know you can make your equivalent n value plot versus depth. Uh, it can be done very easily, and you can just make sure that you know your CPT uh, values are compatible with what you would expect in a in an SPT based investigation. Now I'll go a little faster. Uh, the uh, from CPT you can get your soil unit weight, and that's great. Uh, in any case, unit weight from Shelby tubes is always a little uh, dicey, <laughs> but unit weight values from CPT can be quite good. Uh, and this is again, I, I will not. It's a very busy slide. It's well documented, well correlated. Lots of research in all of these correlations. Uh, so we can be very confident. Shear strength parameters, if you want a deformation modulus values from CPT, uh, you can get that. You can get your angle of internal friction. You can get your undrained shear strength, your C sub U. Uh, relative density, you can get a very good idea of relative density. You look at this from your CPT results. And again, see the beauty of everything is it's continuous data. And very, and you look at how much on a site, you will not get too much scattered ever in a CPT sounding. If this was boron investigation, you'll have points all over the graph. Hydraulic properties. Now, this is also becomes very important, uh, especially if you are looking at soft ground investigations. Uh, hydraulic properties become very critical. Uh, your C sub V coefficient of consolidation, your permeability. And all you have to do is you have to use a piezo cone. And every now and then, every three meters or five meter depth interval, you have to stop, do a dissipation test. Uh, it doesn't take too much time. Uh, and you know you get a beautiful curve, a beautiful dissipation curve. You get your T50. And you know it's one of the, I think, it's one of the best or the most accurate ways to check your in situ hydraulic properties uh, that exist. Uh, again, coefficient of permeability you can get from the dissipation test data. And lastly, you know, again, of course, you can do a shear wave velocity test simply by using a seismic CPT. But if you don't have a seismic CPT, you're doing a regular CPT test, you can still correlate your uh, Q sub T or your quantum resistance to your shear wave velocity. And the correlations are very are fairly standard uh, again and a very strong correlations. Uh, so this is what I mean in a snapshot and and you know it's in the data is digital. You have these amazing softwares these days uh, where all you have to do is you know you copy your data from your data logger to your PC, dump it in the software, and within a minute you get you know wealth of information. You can get your quantum resistance, friction ratio. Uh, you get your pore pressure, uh, you get your unit weights, your relative density, site characterization, you see, uh, everything. You can get this instantly. And we have done a lot of work, uh, a lot of projects where we have done CPTs and boreholes, and we have checked firsthand uh, how good the correlations are, and it's quite good. So we have checked deformation modulus from lab testing, SPT base. Uh, you know, uh, shear wave velocity based pressure meter and CPT, and and we get very good, very strong correlations. A little about applications uh, of CPT. So in the earlier section, we talked about how the CPT results can be used to estimate geotechnical parameters like C, phi, gamma, etc. The, the beautiful thing is you don't even need to go there. You don't need to go from data two parameters, two analysis. You can go directly from test results to solving the engineering problem at hand. And that is because you're doing in situ testing, right? Uh, if, you, if you look at the plot below, uh, the table below, you will see that the perceived applicability or the reliability of CPT is very high. One to two, it's very high for almost all our typical uh, engineering problems. You can use CPT data directly for pile design, bearing capacity, liquefaction assessment, and the reliability of such assessment of such analysis is very high. Most of these correlations incidentally exist in the Indian codes as well. Uh, so this is not something which is outside of the Indian code. 
most of what we are talking about is covered by BIS. Uh, of course, it will require some more updation, but most of these things are covered by BIS since a long time now. Uh, CPT results can directly be applied to many engineering problems. They're very well established in perical correlations. You can do shallow foundation design, deep foundation design, seismic design, liquefaction susceptibility, post earthquake deformations, design of sand drains, all kinds of stuff. And again, I, I'm sorry I keep saying this, but uh, in my view, the beauty of this is uh, because the data is digital and continuous and the correlations are well established, we have softwares for all of this. So literally you can do your CPT, uh, wrap it up in about half an hour, transfer the data to your laptop and you, with a click of a button, you will have all your interpreted geotechnical parameters uh, in less than in a few seconds. And you can also, you know, just key in your foundation size and so on and so forth. And instantly you can get your foundation design. Uh, so see, this is what uh, the software that we use, we, we use the CLIC software. For example, if you're doing liquefaction assessment, uh, again, there's, you don't need, unlike the SPT, you know, which requires so many five corrections, sometimes fairly random, uh, the CPT data can simply be imported into the software and you can get your factor safety against liquefaction, your CRR, CSR, CSR plots instantly. Uh, also your vertical settlements due to liquefaction. Because CPT data is, CPT is fast, it's continuous and very reliable. It has also become the go-to tool to check ground improvement efficacy. A lot of our project sites these days uh, require ground improvement, whether it's dynamic compaction or vibro replacement, vibro flotation, so on and so forth. Uh, and worldwide, uh, if you're doing ground improvement, uh, we always recommend that there's no point, uh, you know, going in with the ground improvement program if you don't have a comprehensive before and after testing. Uh, and we've been doing this on several projects. The CPT again is one of the best because this is how you get your data. You can you can check your pre and post improvement uh, ground conditions, and you get the data on site. Uh, with a very good degree of accuracy. If you miss some spots, if you miss some layers, you get that information on site, real time. Seismic hazard assessment, uh, this becomes very important on a lot of projects, especially these days, uh, where we are trying to build on uh, sites where you have saturated sands with low end values, which are susceptible to liquefaction. So if you look at NCR summary report or Yaud et al, uh, the recommended approach is, you know, you calculate your resistance to liquefaction based on one of three methods, uh, the SPT, the CPT, or the shear wave velocity method. And again, if you're using a seismic CPT or even a piezo cone, then you can get your uh, CRR values uh, very accurately. And sometimes the values work out, uh, the CPT-based resistance values are much more uh, robust as compared to uh, CRR based on SPT values. Geo-environmental applications, we have been uh, messing up our planet Earth for many years and we are all in the process of cleaning it up now. So geo-environment has become a, a large and upcoming field. And once again, when if you look at landfill design or uh, dump design, uh, CPT has become a valuable resource, uh, especially piezo cones, because uh, measuring in situ pore pressures also is very critical for design of landfills and other such projects. Uh, lastly, uh, let's talk about some of the more recent uh, innovations. Uh, in the last couple of years, I think with the advancement of CPT technology and with increased adoption of the technology, uh, various people have come up with much better pushing equipment. And I think uh, pushing equipments much higher than 35 ton capacity are also available in some countries. Uh, we had, some companies have come up with conversion uh, kits where you can take a conventional drill rig and kind of attach a CPT uh, hydraulics onto the rig. So you don't have to invest in a separate pushing equipment. Cone designs are getting better. Uh, the latest cones which we uh, have ordered 
from the Dutch. Uh, the phones are beautiful and very accurate. Uh, the acquisition softwares, interpretation softwares are uh, very good. Uh, and of course, now with 60 odd years of experience, uh, global experience, I would say, now with in-situ testing, there is increased engineer confidence. And I think we owe it to all the researchers and practicing engineers who put in their uh, time and efforts into uh, you know, bringing this technology into mainstream geotechnics. And uh, it's great. And lastly, you know, we'll see there are lots of sensors. So these days, you know, your phones will come with so many different kinds of sensors. It's almost like a plug and play kind of situation. You can have temperature sensors. You, we already saw the geophones with the seismic cone. Uh, you have cameras which can be fitted on your cone to actually see the soil as it moves past the cone. Uh, there's gamma neutron, electrical resistivity, dielectric, pH, oxygen exchange, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't understand much of this. I, we have never used these cones, but you have the resistivity cone, which is becoming popular, which measures the resistivity or conductivity of the soil, uh, apart from other oh. test methods. Uh, and this would become, sometimes it becomes very important. Uh, you have these days a U-WASP cone, uh, which is used largely in geo-environmental investigations uh, to give you a PAH presence, uh, detect PAH presence. Uh, I saw this on somebody's website. It's a membrane interface probe, uh, which gives you, uh, helps you detect uh, VOCs while doing the CPT. Uh, then, of course, we talked about soil sampling. These are also getting better. There's hydraulic punch system, uh, there's a bat or a gas sampler system. So again, so, so the point is, you know, once you have the cone fitted, it's an electronic system, you know, sky is the limit. You can, you can add and subtract modules as you see fit, and you can get a wealth of information from the same test. Uh, I close here. Thank you so much for your time. And hopefully we have time for questions because that's more important. Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That was a fabulous lecture. I think you started from the very base and just went up to the top. I think nothing else is left to describe here. The so, only thing left now is implementation. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful lecture for covering all the dimensions of CPT. Now, with your kind permission, can we proceed for the query round? Absolutely, so that's a fun part. All right. Uh, so first, I'll read out the questions uh, that the participants have posted on the chat box. Then we'll move on to if any participant want to ask directly, they can afterward unmute themselves and ask the question. So uh, the first question is from Miraji Thakkar. What are the most frequent and common geotechnical tests in construction of highways and railways? Well, the simple answer uh, in the state of industry today is boreholes. <laughs> Everyone loves boreholes. I, I fail to understand why, but uh, I think it's partly to do with uh, just the, uh, you know, a lot of specifications and a lot of hesitancy in exploring new ideas. But I think today you would say the most common is boreholes. But you know, we have done, uh, especially for private contractors, we have done a lot of investigations. Uh, even for highways, there was one project I would like to share where we did a borehole-based investigation and the entire highway project in Punjab, the entire project, you know, the, all the soils were found to be liquefiable based on SPT, right? And the project became, the foundation cost shot up uh, because all the bridge foundations were open foundation over pile foundations, project cost shot up. Uh, this is when the contractor kind of uh, touched base with Sengers, and we recommended he go for a CPT based investigation. Uh, the good thing was it took us just about 20 days to uh, investigate the entire stretch. Uh, we did a lot of CPTs, and uh, because the SPT based data was of poor quality, the one he got uh, done earlier. The CPTs gave us much better CRR values, and we managed to actually eliminate liquefaction altogether. So the found the that particular highway is now built on open foundations. This is a couple of years back. So, yeah. 
Okay, I I think that will suffice. Um, okay, there is another question from uh, Yashpal Chadha. Uh, between SPT and cone penetration test, which should be preferred? So that's easy. I would say CPT any day. Any day, no doubt. And someone has added to that. What are the cost aspects? Uh, I knew this question will come up. I did give you a hint that cost-wise, uh, depending on your project, it doesn't work out. It works out about the same cost for a fraction of the time. Uh, it's not very expensive, but the cost aspect, unfortunately, I need to work out on project basis. So if you have an opportunity, we can work out the costing. It's not a problem. Yes, uh, Yashpalji has raised his hand. Sir, you can unmute yourself and further specify the question. Yashpal Shardaji, can you hear us? I think you are on mute, Mr. Yashpal. Okay, he had a question here. Between SPT and cone penetration test, same question. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, we'll move further. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pankaj Bhatt has asked, when we go for a 100 meter or more than 30 meter? Uh, I didn't understand the question. Uh, I think the depth of investigation has to be decided based on your project requirement, based on what you're building. Uh, and the thumb rules given in the code and various references. Usually you like to go up to twice the width of the foundation, uh, or at least you want to investigate the foundation influence zone, let's say. So the depth of investigation would, you know, you need to decide beforehand. I don't know if I answered that question properly. Okay, there is another question from Malaji. Uh, if continuous SCPT is there, how the consolidation characteristics could be known? For consolidation specimen, again, separate UDS samples need to be collected. How it can be done because of cost involvement with two operations? Oh, so, uh, Mr. Malay, this is this was the beauty of, of, of the piezo cone, right? That's what we discussed. So what we do in conventional geotechnics is we will actually uh, try to collect so-called undisturbed samples from boreholes. We transport these samples uh, presumably in intact condition to the lab and then we'll do a consolidation test uh, practically speaking i feel by the time the sample reaches the lab usually it's in no condition to do any kind of tests on it <laughs> so the and and you know the consolidation test itself because of the way we do it has, has so many limitations uh, the go-to method again globally is if we are truly interested in knowing the consolidation characteristics of the soil use a piezo cone and i said you know you can stop you can do a dissipation test in situ because now you have a poor poor water pressure measuring sensor so you can do the uh, dissipation test in situ that will give you the t50 which will give you the c sub b value and and trust me the, the values are far more reliable as compared to what you'll get from a lab based investigation Thank you, Mr. Gupta. Just I want to add on that. I'm uh, Dr. Malay Kumar there speaking now. Yes, I know you. So I want to add on that uh, uh, whether this 60 mm diameter uh, uh, sample consolidation specimen we can uh, uh, make from, make after reaching those uh, samples, SCPT samples to lab. No, no, no. So, so it's uh, the CPT uh, method is you don't really collect samples in the CPT sounding. So how the consolidation specimen will be collected? We are not collecting it, sir. So hold on. I don't know. I think you can still see my slides. Let me go because back to. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Where is here, sir? Here. Right. So what we actually do is if you're using a piezo cone, sir. So while doing the sounding, supposing I want to know the uh, consolidation or the permeability characteristics at, say, 10 meter depth, I will stop my cone at 10 meter depth. Okay. And then uh, in the cone, I already have, sorry, like this. In the cone, I have a, a U2 sensor, right? A pore pressure measurement sensor. We stop it. 
and we let so obviously when we are pushing the cone we generate excess pore pressures around the cone right okay. because we are essentially shearing the soil so when we stop the cone and we measure the uh, dissipation of these pore pressures with time this okay. is picked up by the sensor so what you get is you get this you get your uh, delta v delta u versus time so you get this in you get this from the cpt data you get the dissipation curve now, okay. this dissipation curve you can usually we do it up to t50 but usually when you get this dissipation curve then like in like you would do normally in a consolidation test also in taylor's method once you have your dissipation curve you can use this to calculate your c sub v as well as your you know your uh, uh, your time your t50 c sub v you can calculate your kh value and all of this you will get can you get the e log p curve from that e log p curve so that we can you know find out the pre consolidation pressure as well as cc and cc and c as well you don't get so so yes yes and no you do not generate an e log p curve because we are not doing an actual consolidation test right but the parameters that you get from a consolidation test which is your c sub v or your mv or your k uh, you still get those parameters through empirical correlation with the cpt data itself either from the dissipation test data or from correlations uh, with hold on i put a lot of slides on i skipped a lot of slides just in the interest of time and i can share this with you sir you can get all of these values from the cpt data directly now that's okay i understand that's very you know uh, i congratulate you for this type of implementation it is very required but i am worried about you know consolidation settlement in the soft clay although these are giving shear strength parameters cp coefficient of consolidation it is giving that you just explain yes. now i need uh, pre consolidation pressure uh, and i need cc and i need cs yes so uh, uh, how only uh, from correlations can i get the pre consolidation pressure yes absolutely your ocr is very well correlated with uh, i'm trying to find uh, the right uh, the ocr values are very well correlated with cbt so in fact i would say if at next week we are mobilizing to a site in kochi where we have soft clays right very soft clays as nc type of clays in kochi and traditionally we you know uh, we used to do prefer doing field bench shear test well, for this side we are going only for piezo cones so i'm i'm mobilizing that next week and the piezo cone will give you your entire uh, ocr versus depth uh, profile I'm, i'm sorry i'm not able to find the slide now no but okay. you can get your ocr versus depth you can get the entire plot now if it really so then it will be you know revolutionary instrumentation and it will change a lot in the geotechnical practice yes and yes yeah. that we if it is live like this we have to you know advocate it through every field it will uh, reduce a lot of cost and uh, various you know field problems to make the you know sample preparation in the good shape and sounds shall be laser and all that thing yep. so i am eagerly waiting for a you know code from you so that we can make it you know happen in north east india from agartala so really judge thank you very much yes thank you so much sir in fact i feel as as a country i think we are very late in our adoption of advanced geotechnics you know for some reason we have clung on to you know at boros and all that uh, for no reason and, and you know But one thing no you know, one thing we have to make uh, we have to visit the you know chief engineers of the all the departments to change yes. the you know specification of the geotechnical investigations Yes. Otherwise, they are in a hole for the you know old type of you know geotechnical specification in that yes. conducting the geotechnical exploration or what, which Fine. are causing lot of problems. You know, we were unable to make the new things into the practice when when it is the demand of the technical requirement. We yep. have to make a lot of work together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I look forward to working with you, and we'll bring this change together, all of us. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malaji. That was a very good discussion. so there is another question from uh, as selvam uh, first question is cpt with sampling is anyone have done in india with regarding mm, any project in in the best of my knowledge i think no uh, but if you have a project we would love to be the first 
Okay. Second question is that is CPT can replace soil sampling? How confident are you about the interpretation of soil in parameters? For example, without sampling, how can anyone correlate the soil parameters, estimation of SU, derivation of NKT more than three, and what is the reliability of CPTU results without soil boreholing? I think that's an excellent question, Mr. Selvam. And I think uh, your question really uh, you know, hits the nail on the head. This is, uh, what this is, is our own hesitation. Uh, in, in adoption. And I, I talked to uh, a couple of weeks back, I had the privilege of having a one-on-one -on -one with Professor Robertson, uh, who is one of the pioneers in, or one of the leading figures in CPT technology. And I asked him, I asked him, sir, when I go uh, meet project owners and consultants, I get a lot of questions like this about confidence uh, and reliability and you know how can we do design without samples, without SPT. And he told me, uh, he's very kind, and he told me that about 30 years ago, that was the same situation in North America. So at that time, he used to go to consultants and try to convince people about CPT, and people used to be like very scared of relying on CPT data without taking samples uh, because they had their comfort with sampling and SPT values. But he also told me that it took them a good 20 years of, you know, they started small. So what they did is they started by taking up baby steps. So they took up the first project, maybe they did five CPTs, five boreholes, correlated the results. The next project, maybe they did eight CPTs and two boreholes, you know, and, and that's how they moved step by step and they gained a lot of confidence. And today, a lot of investigations for, for tailings, for renewables, for wind, solar, a lot of investigation programs are purely CPT based because they now have so much confidence. Uh, they now have so much, uh, experience using CPT, that they are able to do that. And, and the people who are using CPTs, and I've talked to those consultants, they are, they are in awe of the technology. Uh, and they don't want, they don't see the sense in doing boroughs anymore. They're like, who's got the time? <laughs> so, so I think it's a matter of time, sir. We'll get there, Mr. Selvin. Okay, so that was a very good answer, actually. <laughs> Oh, there was another question from Ankit Kumar Gupta. If there are a lot of advantages using CPT, why are SPT values preferred in India? <laughs> cough, cough, sir. <laughs> I think, me, to be, in all seriousness, it's not only fear. It is also, uh, so interestingly, CPT has been around. As I said, at Senges, we have been propagating this maybe since the 1990s. Uh, and we have been doing CPTs. We are still doing a lot of projects. Uh, we recently did a project in, uh, you know, where we did not do any boreholes. We did a combination of uh, pressure meters and uh, CPTs, and we got some very good results, much higher modulus values, much more robust values. It's, I think it's, it's, it takes time, sir. We are a big country. It, it is taking time, uh, you know, to change public opinion and perception. Uh, but I think... Now it's about time. I think we are the change is afoot. Thank you, sir. I think uh, till date, uh, this boreholing has been a part and parcel of this geotechnical engineering. And now and there is a time to be shifted towards CPT mode. It, it makes it makes no sense anymore. You know why? Why would I pay more and spend so much more time to do something which, end of the day, does not even give me what I want. Yes, it exactly. To me, it makes no sense. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so Yashpal Shartaji has another question. Do you think that CPT is adequate and we do not require other tests besides CPT? That's another very good question. Mr. Sharda, what I would say is, well, uh, if you ask my personal opinion, yes, I think CPT is adequate. But when, because we are still in the adoption phase, uh, as I said, baby steps is the way to go. Uh, for our first, until we have a wealth of CPT information and we generate uh, confidence, customer confidence, as well as internal confidence, I think, you know, we can start, uh, you know, I don't know where you're sitting, Mr. Sharda, but in your area, you know, we can start by doing, say, a 50-50 uh, kind of a investigation program, correlate, move to 80-20, and then move to 100-0 kind of program. It's, it's, it's important to take those baby steps because... We also need to fine tune some of those correlations as per our own 
uh, Indian soil conditions and and convince ourselves before we can convince others. So yes, you but, want to uh, say that the verification is required? Uh, so it is required more for uh, uh, more for our own mental satisfaction. Uh, but yeah, yeah, for these, yeah. Correct. But internationally, these correlations and uh, are very well established. And uh, you know, I'm I'm holding this. Yeah, book. But once you have to change the mindset, you require some data yeah. to verify it. Then only can yes. you can move. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank but you. that data exists yes. even in India. If you if you go to our website, uh, you will find we have a lot of publications where. We have done probably hundreds of projects in India where we have done boros and CPTs, and we have done cross verification. Uh, and it, you know, we have we published this extensively. Uh, you'll find them all on our company website. We published extensively, so we have already we have wealth of correlations in India in all kinds of soil conditions. Because we there is one Kochi. problem only that in SPT we see the sample and we can see uh, correlate yes we are getting correct properties or not but in case of CPT we don't see anything we are moving in blind that is you have to sir, establish a confidence rather i would say sir it is we go back to the first slide <laughs> in geotechnical hmm. we don't really see anything uh, in SPT if you think about it sir there are so many sources of error and uh, we have recently also we purchased the SPT energy measure uh, analyzer, and now we are truly appreciating that you know one of the reasons on projects you know SPT values used to be all over the place is because yeah. there, you know, so much, so much, if you change your equipment, change your operator, change your labor, change from yeah, yeah, of course, that is the... uh, SPT is really and and on the other hand CPT is contractor independent, operator independent. Uh, and everything independent, you know, it doesn't matter A, B, C, con karai CPT, you will always get the same results because it's modular. Yeah. So it's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Just one thing I want to add, I would like to add, sorry, I'm coming again. Uh, can can one camera be possible to fit in this uh, instruments yes. with an innovation so that uh, this question can be you know addressed very well? You can. We, people have come up with cameras, sir. Again, and, and I, I'll quote Dr. Peter Robertson on this. He said that people came up with the cameras at the edge or the tip of the cone, but very quickly it became very boring because who wants to sit and look at a four-hour video of you know soiling by the cone? <laughs> So it, will be recorded. it will be recorded anyone if you raise question you can see the sample yes uh, to be very honest with you sir, even in classical geotechnic how many times you really get to see all your samples if you're doing a 200 borehole investigation how many times does the does the guy doing a, the analysis really get to see each and every sample by himself something to think about very often we depend on what we get the results so, but as point taken, I think the CPT sampler again would be a very welcome addition, and we'll get that. It's it's not very uh, complex, uh, so the CPT push sampler would be a very good uh, accessory to have, uh, at okay. least during the transition period. Yeah, that will be good also. Uh, yes, uh, Sanjay Gupta sir, I think want to add something, sir, please. Yeah. Well, I was enjoying all the discussions. I like to say something. For Mr. Uh, YP Sharda and also MK Day, you see what it has taken us more than 30 years of, you know, I mean, uh, giving at various IGS forums on the advanced testing techniques, you know, right from 90s. We have been making the presentations, trying to convince that along with the borehole, let's do this uh, static code penetration test. Of course, those days we were not talking of CPTU, right? CPTU is a new recent uh, addition in our fleet, which we are going to do now, okay? And it has taken us 30 years. So many papers we have given, so many lectures presented, that what are the advantages from the borehole data, what you get the SBC of the settlement, or from a static code, or from pressure meter, how do you get it, right? Ultimately, Ultimately, I would say this is something, you know, we as a geotechnical engineers have failed miserably to convince the structural engineer because he wants to believe in 18th century thing. Yeah, plate load test to karado na, pata lang 
30 by 30 की प्लेट लोड टेस्ट कर लो फॉर अ डिजाइन ऑफ अ रफ फाउंडेशन ऑफ अ 30 मीटर वे आई मीन आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ अस कैन अंडरस्टैंड वेयर आर वी टॉकिंग ऑफ यू नो इट इज द सेम थिंग लाइक यू नो वी एज अ सिविल इंजीनियर से वी टॉक अबाउट द हार्ट ट्रांसप्लांट ओके और हार्ट सर्जरी आई मीन वी आर इंजीनियर्स वी आर नॉट द डॉक्टर्स और सर्जन्स सो दिस इज व्हाट इज द मेन डिस्पैरिटी इन आवर सोसाइटी इन आवर कंट्री मे बी एल्सवेयर आल्सो elsewhere they could overcome all these things very quickly but in india i know at sanjers we have been struggling for last 30 years right even till date in irc 78 we could not get an addition of a static code right? so wherever if there is a requirement if we say and the uh, contractor agency everybody wants then they open the irc they say it is not given in irc IS code does mention about the static code but it does not say it it is uh, you know to be replaced now in the recent code we are trying to include all these things that depending upon the geology of the area one should decide but what i'm saying it is something which all of us all geotechnical engineers together have to take a stand and move forward in this otherwise we are just i mean we are, i would say that i have wasted 30 years uh, another generation would waste another 30 years without getting anything out that's what i would so my request is to this forum to all the students appreciate understand and move forward for the new techniques new advanced techniques which have already been established world over so why not in india that's my one submission Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I'd like to next invite Shri S. Selvam ji. Please present his views. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Thanks you for your presentation. Um. Can you hear me? Can you just? Yes. Please? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 yeah any uh, i appreciate the about the webinar about cpt and the introduction of the same thing uh, i am also in the field for last 20 years so yes. i i started career with the cpt spt sampling and now we are doing a, a cpt u uh, also ps locking for shear wave velocity measurements all things all all advanced testing we are doing uh okay it is good to practice cptu but uh, i i like to share my view basically my opinion uh even though cpt is good hmm? uh i i don't think uh, anybody in india based on the cpt results develop their own uh, classification sir no we we just believe so what is my what is my opinion my opinion is in in india we just believe what somebody did in some country or they correlated or they they developed their system they developed their own uh, lab uh, system and they they did some correlation some of the correlation they purely theoretical one they they not done correlation for all the parameters like um, yeah uh, Uh, coefficient consolidation parameter hydraulic para hydraulic conductivity parameter many things uh, is a correlation or based on theory so not not direct correlation between the axle sampling and the cpt data no not done so it is for young engineers including for me so what I, what i am taking is this point is we should not believe any correlations uh, blindly I yeah agree. okay Correct. that that is that is the one point so cpt with advocate promote but it's it it cannot replace soil sampling to my knowledge maybe you right. can go 50 50 or 60 40 that is the one yes. but why many people uh, believe including me sampling means uh, i see sampling i know is a disturbed one but uh, even a spt even one sample i get sample i can feel my own constants that means uh, entire my things i can 95 percentage is confirm okay this soil this step this is the soil even i no need to go to the lab and do the test so in field itself i can feel the soil type yep. then that confidence i cannot get cpt test right i am no, no, in agreement with you 
I mean, yeah, even it. even one of the project we done CPTU, we done sampling also, just five meter away. Hmm? So when you do CPT, that results based on uh, well known international level recognized uh, Robertson chart. So it tells something, some solid type. Okay. So I am giving you just an example. I am sharing so that every engineer should know, or uh, we we should know about that. But when the sampling is taken at the depth, that sampling classification is not exactly what we got it uh, from the chart. Correct. No. So that chart has limitation. That chart are applicable only for some soil. Suppose it is a over consolidated soil or it is something like a weather rock or things that sort uh, has limitations cannot be used. We need to understand that. Um, yeah, otherwise, so if we are advocating in India, then we should do our own analysis. Okay, we done uh, CPT here, here we done the soil sampling, the lab test we done. This is the correlation. If we are doing it here and we are promoting it, then then it is, uh, then we have to go parallelly. Blindly take CPT and we follow, blindly, oh, ball penetrometer is better, we will follow that. T bar is better. We will follow that. Uh, actually, many people, even some of the institute also, they are saying, in addition to CPT, we can do ball penetrometer. We can do D bar and all. The introduction of ball bar, T bar is meant for mainly offshore. Many people don't even understand that. So onshore and all, not at all required to use that T bar ball penetrometer unless it is very very soft soil or very very flowable soil like. Uh, Maybe coaching you can use like a very soft clay. But uh, answer, there is no requirement to use ball bar or deep bar uh, in, in any project. But even some, some of us uh, uh, advocating, so that is a good technique, advanced technique. Without understanding their limitation, we, we promote and uh, then all our young engineers uh, becoming very blind. Actually, I, I don't want, basically, I'm discussing a little more. Basically, we need to. Advocate with, with the proper background knowledge. Yeah, I think I agree with you, sir. I think uh, it's very important, and I'm not trying to. When I talk about softwares, I always say take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I am not advocating that all geotechnical engineers quit their jobs and sit at home and let the software do a job. It's definitely not what we say. And you're right. The characterization uh, based on CPT does have limitations. Uh, they are very careful not to call it soil classification. They call it soil behavior type. Uh, yeah, boreholes uh, sampling. Uh, if you saw one of my earlier slides, yes, we can. We must do a phase investigation. Maybe you do a first phase, which might be purely in situ testing or soundings. But you must follow up, especially for complex projects. Follow up by doing uh, physical uh, sampling and high quality sampling, high quality testing, especially in the critical zones. That's very important. Sometimes cemented soils are there, and you can miss it uh, in in a in a ECPT test. You know, you say you get that, so you have to you may have to use your judgment if you're doing a, a seismic CPT. Then you know you may have to look at your shear wave velocity to figure out that hey, this is a cemented zone. You may not get that in in the uh, in the QC or the FS values. Mm -hmm. uh, you may get that low strain. So again, you know. You definitely need the geotechnical engineers, and I, I thank you for your experience. I think uh, it is definitely uh, uh, a very good advice that you know we have to whatever we use, we have to still use our own brains. <laughs> hey, no, no, I, I am also learning, still learning only learning stage. I, I mean, so in, in during learning, still I and I I, I realized that, oh, these are the things advantage, this advantage, yes. then all the things. So I am just sharing here, so that particularly for, uh, uh, for all our engineers and also the young, young youngsters, young engineers, they will come. Like me, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if, if I may, if I may yeah, add a little, uh, yes, uh, uh, having uh, correlations with uh, uh, borehole data and uh, other um, uh, tests uh, are very important. And uh, before we are able to, uh, you know. Give uh, CPT the, uh, uh, you know, as you say that 
you use it only and don't uh, uh, go for other tests you have to have the develop the local correlations yeah, uh, based yeah. on uh, uh, indian uh, uh, soils uh, so that is very important uh, till then of course uh, uh, you can reduce on the number of boreholes you can do cpds you can do pressure meter tests there are various other tests uh, which uh, you, uh, of course for seismic uh, uh, there are the cross hole and the down hole tests uh, so a combination of all this uh, advanced testing technologies is i think the right way to go uh, so that's all i have to say on this yeah thank yeah, you sir mr yeah. selvam you have very rightly yeah, yeah. said you see the no particular test in geotechnical engineering is the uh, works like aspirin you know like that aspirin medicine which is used for everything if you have a flu uh, it will work fever then it will work headache it will work i mean it's nothing like that so every test in geotechnical engineering has to be correlated and established or rather i would say selected depending upon your geology of the area the site condition the soil stratification and the type of the project you know just to add on to your experiences of course you have got about 20 years i have got a little bit more than that the point is that somebody tells me that you have done bore hole the spt and everything you give me the dynamic soil parameters based on the correlations right so i always say ki i cannot give provide you the dynamic soil parameters based upon my spt based upon the old correlations if you want to design your machine foundation you have to do the test to evaluate your own soil dynamic soil parameters at the project site so it is the mm -hmm. same thing you see no one test can replace other tests you have to have the battery you have to have the combination to work out which one will be suitable and as i mentioned over last 30 years what we have been doing borrow the static on pressure meter the same site we are trying to you know do the analysis to show that where is the difference where we can have a better performance of the foundation at a lesser cost right and with a, i would call it not as a higher factor safety i always call it as a factor of reliability if you have a more reliable parameters you can have a higher factor of reliability and that will be the sustainable engineering according to me yeah yes sir i, I am i am always in favor of uh, advanced uh, testing methods and other thing so what what i i, I found is uh, mm, nothing replaces uh, soil borehole at least in any project uh, in the preliminary stage or, uh, or the detail stage it should be coupled with uh, uh, borehole and uh, cpt that that is my my thing without cpt borehole i no, i, I found right. the, the confidence is uh, very less uh, I, no no i agree with you i agree yeah, yeah. with you one has That's to true. develop its own confidence Yeah, over the period of time you do the you know the both the things together and then you know switch over to advance that yeah. that depends i mean i that is now the individual choice and the individual level of confidence right? yeah yes that, that, is, that is the only i am i am just sharing that is the only no point. no no that that's mm -hmm. absolutely correct and understandable this is exactly what we have been doing we have with the advanced testing techniques in sengers this is how we have been trying to develop it Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you for uh, the today's presentation. Yeah. Last week also I attended. Uh, thank you, sir uh, Ravi Sundaram. I didn't say uh, that was by Mr. Ravi Sundaram. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah thank uh, you. Miss Deepthi is here. I think. I, I think Mr. Sharda wants to say something. Is it? Yes. Uh, sir, I want to say only one thing. We should not depend on one test. one type of test totally for the foundation we should have always combine okay we can have uh, proportion of one test more and le others less but we should have combination yeah, yeah very correct sir this is exactly what we have been talking of okay sir thank you uh, can we have ms deepthi on the line can you please unmute yourself and ask your question okay uh, so we'll move on to next question by miraj chakar ji sir considering per meter rate of spt and cpt how much approximate percentage is the difference 
I typically like to avoid uh, the issue of commercials in technical presentations. I don't think it's correct. But ballpark, I did indicate that cost-wise, uh, it's not very different. If we talk about per meter rate, there's not a whole lot of difference. Uh, if you're using a mechanical cone or a simple cone, again, as you know, you advance, you start using more complex cones because they're expensive, like the piezo cone, seismic cone are much more expensive. Then the cost does go up. But also your output from the test also goes up uh, in much greater proportion, I would say. Thank you. But cost-wise, borehole versus CPT cost-wise is not very different today. With and as the number of tests go up, uh, with mechanical, as the number of tests uh, or the adoption of technology also increases, naturally the cost will also go down. So right now, most of the equipment is imported. Uh, but I think uh, the next 10, 15 years, I expect the cost to go down further. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Vivaj. I think it's for me. Can we please get the recording of today's lecture? Yes, uh, you will get all the recordings. But uh, towards the end of the webinar series, we'll post everything at one single platform. Uh, then we have R Dr. Robinson, RG from IIT Mumbai. Welcome to you, sir. And uh, he has asked that, what is the reliable way of getting the cone factor while correlating QT with undrained shear strength? Ah, so the NKT factor, I think Sir is talking about, uh, usually there's a range, I think mostly on an average people adopt NKT of 14 for most soils, uh, although there are there's a range given. Again, I think in line with our earlier discussion, what we would always recommend is, you know, for more complex sites, uh, where we are doing maybe boros, pressure meters, CPT, seismic, uh, it is worth, uh, you know, deriving your deformation modulus from all of these tests and actually comparing, and also from lab testing, actually comparing the deformation modulus from various sources and kind of, you know, getting a good handle of the scatter first time. Uh, so, I think, does that answer your question? I didn't. Okay, uh, shall we move forward? Yes. So we have another question from PK Nigam. What should be the depth of pile in case of bridge foundation resting on rock? What should be the depth of pile? I, I think this... Hey, this is this question is from pile foundation. Uh, I don't know why it's been asked. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I think to answer that question, you need to do the geotechnical investigation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, something like that. Uh, okay, next question from Mahesh ji. In case of the deep foundations, specifically end bearing, does CPT or SCPTU and is enough for design value determination? Yes, I think. See, your investigation technique, uh, whether it's CPT or SPT or whichever one you use, the focus is ground characterization. Once you have the proper ground characterization, once you understand how the ground will behave. After that, the analysis is the next step. It doesn't matter whether you are designing a retaining wall or you're designing an earth fill dam or a deep foundation or a friction pile, end bearing pile, it doesn't matter. If you have a good understanding, good grasp of the ground conditions, uh, the ground parameters, you can design anything. Okay, sir, we have next question from Vivek Prakash ji. Sir, how can we relate SPT output with consolidation? I think that's the same as the earlier uh, discussion. Yes, yes, yes. I think you have uh, already expressed a lot uh, through your PPT as well. Yeah. So uh, next question is from PK Nigamji. What are the parameters of deciding the strength of rock? Uh, several parameters, although we didn't talk about this in this presentation because CPT doesn't work in rock. Uh, so we haven't covered this in this presentation. Maybe. In, we can take this up separately. Yes. That, that's a whole new uh, domain. Yes. Now, next question is from Manas Das. What are the current emerging trends in geotechnical engineering? So Everything which we will talk about, thanks to JP and IGS Shimla. These are the emerging trends. Thank you so much. So next we have from Mahesh Kadekar. How reliable the sensor-based parameters of soil as soil has wide range of variation, 
and does undisturbed sample collection possible without much disturbance sample much disturbance in sample i'll answer the i'll answer the first sentence how reliable uh, are the parameters i think we have seen and i think the the uh, one of the aim of the today's talk was to actually show in terms of data real life data that you know there is a good amount of reliability uh, when you use a in situ testing methods does uds collection possible without much disturbance i would say no uh, but i would also say that uh, since we are touching upon this topic depending on your soil type See in India, mostly we have been uh, limiting ourselves, even in sampling, to only using Shelby tube samplers. And I see uh, in a lot of projects, you know, uh, customers will insist, he, uh, irrespective of soil type uh, or uh, uh, stiffness of the soil, uh, people will insist that you know you drive Shelby tube samplers just for the heck of it. Uh, it makes no sense. Uh, you know, it's, it's usually it's useless because by the time you're done. Uh, tokoing that sampler in the ground, it is no longer not even close to being undisturbed, right? Uh, but there are other samplers available these days, and we have used that at uh, several project sites. Uh, we have used uh, samplers like the Mazier sampler, for example, and maybe we can have another talk on that. We have used the Mazier sampler, which is which uses a triple tube core barrel apparatus to collect. Beautiful. Uh, one of my sites right now, we are collecting Mazier samplers. I can show it to you. And you get very good quality intact samples. Uh, I have done this exercise on a site where the earlier investigation is a site in Gujarat a couple of years back. The earlier investigation took Shelby tube samples in refusal strata in n value more than 100. And uh, the, the shear parameters were completely unusable. But the designer designed the pile foundation based on those C5 values. Right? Uh, when the pilot test was done, piles started failing and you had all kinds of problems. Then we went back and we did confirmatory investigations using a proper hydraulic rig, using a major sampler. And we got, and that was the first time at that time we tried a major sampler. The first time I saw something close to being an undisturbed sample. Right? And we got beautiful samples in a PVC tube. We cut it open. We did... your voice is breaking up uh, i think there is some sort of disconnection hello hello uh Saurav, sir can you uh, hear us Andrew. hello Saurav, sir can you hear yes. us i can hear you sorry got disconnected there was some sort of disconnection there yes my bad okay so, sir. Uh, yes Yes, uh, I think in the last lecture, even uh, Ravi Sundaram ji thrown some light on that triple coal barrel pipe thing. Yeah. Uh, yes, so we'll come to the next question from uh, AK Mandal ji. As it is known that all the correlations using the in situ field testing, either SPT, CPT, or PMT, and soil parameters for any specific locations are developed by comparing or matching with the corresponding laboratory evaluation of parameters of the in situ condition soil samples. Hence, is it advisable to do only the field in situ testing, even in the case of CPT, CPTU, without doing any sampling and test of the various soil parameters from the sample in any particular project for true characterization? Uh, I, I think we have discussed a lot about that thing. We have discussed this. Again, Mr. Mandal, I know where he's coming from. The recommended procedure uh, is to do a phased investigation. And we remember we talked about this in one of the earlier slides. Uh, typically, it should be for complex projects, a three-phase investigation. The first can be a very simple preliminary investigation. Maybe do a couple of CPDs, a couple of boroughs, widely spaced, get a ballpark figure of what you're dealing with on the site. The second step can be a detailed investigation, which I would say should be a lot of CPT soundings for sites which can take CPTs. Uh, you know, do, do a bunch of CPT soundings because it's fast and you get immediate results and you get a very good three-dimensional characterization of your site. Based on your CPT results, you will get a very good idea of what are we looking at, where are the weak spots, 
uh, you know where where to focus and the third and final phase should consist of uh, you know additional in situ tests maybe you want to do a couple of pressure meters uh, uh, you may want to do uh, some high quality again i keep saying high quality i feel uh, in most projects we end up doing a lot of boros or very poor quality so we get a lot of garbage so i say <laughs> instead of doing that do a lot of soundings do maybe fewer boros but whatever you do the sampling should be again in line with the previous discussion your spt your sampling your lab testing should be of good quality uh, so many projects these days you look at the report and you can tell that you know the lab testing is not possible <laughs> you know you have thousands of uh, uh, uut results in in the report and you know time wise if you calculate any geotechnical engineering and figure out it's not possible to do it uh, so why are we kidding ourselves uh, let's do the right thing uh, whatever we do should be good quality so at least we can trust the data yes, sir thank you very much yes. uh gopal verma has asked that is this method suitable for soft rocks like mudstone or shale mm, hi gopal nahi no, i would say no strictly speaking but with the larger probe diameter which is now there uh, these days there are and i have not seen but in canada and uh, you know people have done uh, cpt is in uh, friable rocks as well but i have not seen it so i i don't have first hand experience with this yeah can i uh, answer this question yes please mr uh, to mr gobal or my yeah uh you can possible to penetrate to a maximum of uh, 0.4 to 0.5 meter depth then uh, you will get a refusal uh, but uh, first point out of 0.4 meter data first point 0.15 meter data not useful because that is the initial one then uh, point maybe 0.2 meter to 0.4 meter data you get uh, you get all the parameter you get qc fs you can u2 all three but you can get a, a kinds of the idea layer hmm? but you cannot penetrate uh, more than 0.5 meter in both mudstone yeah. and this area yeah i think if your foundations are bearing on such strata it might be better to combine your cpt investigations with uh, borings with triple tube core barrel boring ideally mm -hmm. to actually characterize the rock with the borings so that is still remains the go to method for rock characterization and pressure meter may also be a good idea that's a good idea yes okay uh thank you sir yeah. uh there is another question from avik ji interesting that comprehensive and practically useful session on speed okay that's uh, some sort of appreciation thank you sir uh there is one question from uh adiki sir how many softwares are available and which software is best to analyze thus i think that cpt test results i think there are a bunch of softwares now and i think a quick google search will give it to you uh, what i can share what we have been using is a software called cpetit uh, if you just google it uh, you will find it it's in a greek company geologics me karke hai uh, so that's what we are used to using i'm not saying it's the best i don't have a comparative first hand but i'm fairly happy with this software you can try your own <laughs> so uh if there are any other questions participants can turn up and unmute yourself and themselves and ask the question sir i don't feel there are any so uh, can oh, you they can, they can even they can even send the questions of uh, any on any of the presentations of this webinar series to you and you can forward it to us we'll uh, definitely respond yes sir surely surely that can be done so please forward the questions if you have anything in your mind we will definitely forward to the related persons and speakers so moving towards the end of this session so first of all i like to thank uh, mr saurav sir uh, who spent his time and that was a fabulous discussion uh, today on cpt and that's also in very detail and uh thank you to all the participants as well for uh, all those discussions so again that has been a wonderful session and uh, in fact a great speaker to interact with
and we hope all the audiences would have been benefited in a way or the other. So I extend my thanks to entire IGS team and Singers Geotechnica community as well for making these sessions possible. Again, I request audience to fill out, please fill out the feedback form before leaving. And we'll be having our next lecture on next Friday, not Saturday, because Saturday being uh, 2nd October will be a holiday. So next Friday, we'll meet uh, for the lecture of Mr. Sanjay Gupta Ji, Managing Director of Singers Geotechnica Private Limited on pressure meter test in geotechnical design. So with this, I'd like to thank all of you for being very patient listeners. And obviously, thank you, Saurabh, sir. Thank you, Ravi thank you so much. Gupta, sir, also. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for organizing this. Yeah, thank, you thank, you, everyone. thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Bye, sir. Participants are requested to fill the uh, feedback form before leaving the meet.